The Israel-Hamas war has sparked angry and violent protests around the globe. When Hamas launched their 5,000 rockets towards Israel and Israel's brutal retaliation, major cities across the world have seen people take to the streets in support of both sides. While millions have rallied around Israelis and the Jewish community, pro-Palestinians have also taken to the streets to show support of the oppressed people living under Hamas's leadership. However, some of these protests have turned ugly, resulting in chaos, anti-Semitism, destruction and a harrowing mirrored image of the treatment Jews have been subjected to in the past. Last week in Sydney, Australia, many pro-Palestine protesters met at the Opera House where they were filmed chanting anti-Semitic rhetoric. These actions were slammed by both sides of Australia's political aisle. Uh, this is not a border conflict. Uh, this was an act of terrorism and treachery, and it should be properly condemned uh, by every decent human being. And I think some of the behaviour that we saw at the Opera House last night does not belong in our country. And people can protest peacefully. That is a right. People can express their view, even if we disagree with it in our country. Uh, but some of the conduct last night uh, was appalling, and frankly, there should have been a lot more done to deter that gathering from taking place in the first instance. Now seeing the images just recently, and uh, they're horrific, quite clearly, uh, slogans which are, are anti-Semitic and uh, just uh, appalling uh, with, uh, with no place. And I did say that that demonstration shouldn't have gone ahead, and, and I stand by that. Uh, we, we are a tolerant multicultural nation. I understand that people have deep views about issues relating to the Middle East conflict, uh, but here in Australia we have to deal with political discourse in a respectful way. And I certainly didn't see that from the footage that I saw last night. Still in Sydney, a man brought an Israeli flag to a pro-Palestine rally, causing a stir. Following the bombing of a hospital in Gaza, a group of protesters in Amsterdam began chanting about it. New York has seen similar protests, with one video capturing pro-Palestinians and pro-Israelis facing off against each other. Still in New York, this video showed a man waving a flag with Hamas on it, which has Islamic creed on it. According to journalist Andy No, the videographer was even questioned if he was Jewish. A protester was spotted in the city with a sign that read, Intifada until victory. Intifada is the name of Palestine's uprising, its rebellion against oppression, and translates as shaking off.
In the United States, big corporate heavyweights have begun to pull their donations towards Ivy League universities because of their lack of support towards Israel and the Jewish community. Harvard specifically is under scrutiny after 34 students signed a letter which blamed Israel for Hamas' attack. The letter read, We, the undersigned student organisations, hold the Israeli regime entirely responsible for all unfolding violence. While the university came out and said the students don't speak on behalf of Harvard, multiple donors demanded the school denounce the students for criticising Israel, some of the donors being Jewish. Among its donors, Harvard has the Wexner Foundation, who this week claimed to not be compatible partners with the university anymore. He said the decision was due to the dismal failure of Harvard's leadership to take a clear and unequivocal stand against the barbaric murders of innocent Israeli civilians by terrorists last Saturday. A similar situation has occurred for the University of Pennsylvania, where various donors have either pulled out or urged others to reduce their contributions to just one dollar because of the school's silence. And the New York University, or NYU, came under fire for calling Hamas a terrorist organisation, but not condemning their actions. The school is now facing even more backlash after footage circulated showing two NYU students ripping down posters of missing Israelis. Actions like this from students prompted Republican Senator Josh Hawley to tell members of Congress that anti-Semitic rhetoric on campuses is unacceptable. While the First Amendment certainly protects the right of anybody on our campuses and across the country to say what they want peacefully, peacefully, that doesn't mean that we have to condone it and act as if it's morally acceptable. And I think it's, it's vital that we take a stand. I'm going to ask the Senate to take a stand on the same rhetoric and condemn it as the violent anti-Semitic rhetoric that it is. Let me... Senator Hawley even wrote to the Department of Justice stating it should be investigating pro-Palestine students from various universities who have been blaming Israel for the latest attacks. This video circulated of a few Israeli students crying at the University of Washington while a pro-Palestine protest took place. Alone. They want our people dead! They want us killed! Pro-Palestine protests have been sweeping our news feeds all week, showing chaotic scenes around the world. Outside the UN in New York, a Soviet flag and a Chinese flag were flown. <laughs> Some horrific moments from riots have included people burning Israeli flags and stomping them on the ground. In Paris specifically, protests have turned ugly, resulting in police being involved and tear gas being used. In Canada, a pro-Palestine protester redefined what Hamas is. Hamas is not a terrorist group. Oh, it isn't, man. First of all, Hamas is not okay. a terrorist group. Okay, I'm, then. I'm, Hamas but, well, what, is not a terrorist group. What is it, like a motorcycle it a club? Or? It is a resistance that has been fuming for 75 years of colonialism, of occupation, of murder, of rape, of little children, of women. That's what they are. They are resistance. Do you think Canada is everything, a colonialist country too? Everything or? that they do is justified. 
including what happened last week? Every single thing they have done is justified. In London, protesters clashed with police. Still in London, this horrific video showed a pro-Palestinian asking a Jewish man if his people were dead. Are your people dead? Are your people dead? Are your people dead? Yes. Oh, good. Good. Are they dead? Oh, good. With more pro-Palestine and Stop the War protests lined up for this weekend, it can only be hoped that they are met with more peace and less division than we've seen in the last week.